I'm gonna show you how I flip cars for profit using a few simple processes and steps so you can make an extra couple grand a month very, very quickly. Now, when you're looking for cars, there's multiple places you can go. You can go on auction sites, Craigslist, Facebook, Auto Trader, all those places to find cars. And Auto Tempest is a great one to use because it searches all of them so you can look at all the results in one website. The best thing about these auction sites is you get the opportunity to talk with the auctioneer, go see the car, investigate it on a non-personal level because they're just selling it for somebody else where you can get a little bit more in-depth into the vehicles than if you would from a private seller. Now, when you're on Facebook Marketplace and you find a car that you're interested in, check to see how long it's been listed for. If it's freshly listed less than a day up, the chances that there's wiggle room in the price are lower, but it's still a potential that they might come down on price. So I'll message that person and ask them, are they, is a car available for one? Are they able to budge on the price whatsoever? Do they have any other pictures? Is there any issues that they haven't listed? And the reason for selling. That gives me plenty of information before I set up a date to go see the car and test drive it in person. Now, if it's been listed for several weeks, that gives you more of a chance to just throw out a number to see if they're willing to budge on the price they have listed. Now that you found the car that you're interested in and you've talked with the seller, look at all the possible things that you'll need to fix. Are there emblems missing? Is there door panels that need to be replaced? Is there bumpers that need to be replaced? Is you know the owner tell you that there's brakes that need to be done, tires are bald? All those things, make sure you put together a spreadsheet, which you can do fairly quickly and price out kind of how much money you're looking at putting back into the car. So that way you have a good idea of your actual total cost. And now your research real quickly is to go to like Kelly Blue Book, type in that vehicle, figure out what it's worth from a dealer trade-in and also from a private party sell standpoint so you can get a good idea of what your margins will end up being after those costs and expenses you put in. I usually budget in an extra $500 in my cost to just have wiggle room in case there's other things that I'm not accounting for that need to be repaired. Now, when you get an appointment set up to go test drive a car, make sure you bring with you an OBD scanner, which I have listed down below the ones that I like to use. Now, when you get there, it's always good to run the car for codes. The OBD port is underneath the dashboard typically to check to see if there's any fault codes. So that way you can see if there's anything that the seller is not telling you or everything is true, but they tell you about the vehicle. Now, when you go on the test drive, you're listening for weird sounds. looking for you know any hesitation does the transmission shift smoothly does everything work properly in the vehicle and if all of that checks out you got yourself a good car to go forward with as long as you're comfortable with all the repairs you need to do now for me car flipping is all about research you're trying to find the vehicle that makes the most sense for your skill set and for me mechanical stuff is easy enough and I know a lot about it but detailing is my bread and butter and what I'm known for and what I'm really good at so when I'm looking for these cars on Facebook or Craigslist I don't care if it's dirty on the inside or if it needs things painted or cleaned up on the outside that is something I can 100% handle what I'm making sure of is there's not a lot of rust the car runs properly it drives well a lot of the mechanical features of it and the body are in great condition. If the inside is dirty, send it my way. That is perfect and the easiest thing to clean in my opinion. And the Facebook ad or the ad itself, wherever it's listed, the quality of it makes a huge difference. You wanna make sure that it's got great pictures, good description, and that you're making sure all the details are there so it's very easy for the potential buyer to easily know what's going on before they show up or they look at the vehicle in person. In this video, I only share some of my secrets to car flipping along with only a few of the sites that I use to find these amazing deals. If you wanna know more about it, check the link down below to my Car Flipping 101 course where I go into all of those tips and secrets for you guys. And only for this video, I'm offering a special price of only $9.99 compared to the typical price of over $70. So check out that link down below. Now when it comes to the exterior, this Civic in particular was purchased for fairly low but the inside was trashed. So I always remove the seats from the center console to get all of this trash that you see here vacuumed up and cleaned up. And then any of those stains in the carpets that's causing any smells or just looking straight up disgusting. That is the main reason why seats should be removed, especially if you're flipping. Now when it comes to cleaning the carpets, I always use a mix of OxyClean and BioBreak, which are linked down below, spray it on, agitate it with my drill brush, and then I have a Mighty Extractor that I use to suck up all of that juice from inside those vehicles underneath the seats. This goes for seats, carpets, any fabric in the vehicle can be used to this method. 
Now for the exterior of a car, the biggest thing for me is wheels. Wheels are something that people always pay attention to. They want them to look nice. And when you have brake dust caked on there or rust or grime that doesn't come off easily, take the extra time to remove it completely. So have your brushes, have all your tools to clean inside the barrels, make sure the brake calipers are clean. And then if you need to, you can use a drill brush or a acid to remove that residue that's caked on there. This is, makes a huge difference from the sale of the car because the car looks like it's been well cared for and taken care of and all of that stuff is, is removed from the vehicle. For the exterior paint, just a simple wash, and we'll get into further steps that you can do later on in this video, but just a hand wash to remove any grime and residue on the surface is typically enough for most flips. If you need to go further and you have a higher end car, we'll get into the processes later for clay barring and polishing to remove any imperfections if you want to get a higher ticket price for that vehicle. Now a commonly overlooked spot that you will see every time you get inside the car is all of the door jams, like particularly this trunk for example here, cleaning and spraying all of that stuff out before you clean the interior, all those door frames, those door sills, those are parts of the vehicle that somebody when they first see the car, when they open the door, will see. You don't want it to be caked with dirt and look like it's not been cleaned. So take the time to clean all that stuff up so it looks perfect for that new potential owner. Now whenever you get into a vehicle, your feet are always going onto floor mats, whether they're carpet or rubber, and you wanna make sure they're clean. So I always use a good vacuuming, pressure wash them, hit them with the extractor, whatever needs to be done to get rid of all of those stains, gunk buildup, gum, whatever gets on there, completely clean them, and if you need to, replace them, because that is a big point as well. You're going to be getting inside the car and see those every single time. Just minor things like that can make a huge difference and they're not very expensive. You can either pick them up used on eBay, you can pick up you know, a generic set, even generic rubber um, vinyl sets. Anything that makes them look better than they are is a huge plus. Another spot I like to hit is any specific touch points when you're driving. For instance, this center armrest is covered in grease and grime and nicotine and cigarette smoke. So using a steam cleaner to power out all of that grease and grime Clean it completely is a big thing to do as well. This goes for the center console, the steering wheel, the e-brake, the shifter assembly. All of those spots are definitely areas that you want to pay attention to and making sure all of that buildup is completely removed to make sure it looks like as showroom finish and new as you can possibly make it. The other thing that I don't understand why sellers don't take care of is the headlights. The headlights are yellowed, oxidized, they look like crap. They're one of the first things that an owner is going to see, so why not just take the time to polish them? There's, there's many ways you can do this. For this one in particular here, I'm using a circular small headed polisher with a simple cutting compound that you would use on the paint. It's nothing special. And polishing them completely cleaned, and then I apply a clear coat finish or an, a ceramic coating to the headlight surface so it doesn't oxidize and yellow again in the future. Now the next other way is you can use a orbital polisher. Those work well with the same kind of cutting compound. Or you can even opt for a kit like the Cerakote kit. I have that link down below. It's a headlight restoration kit. It comes with everything you need. It costs like maybe 20 bucks. And you're essentially sanding it, polishing it, and ceramic coating it to restore the headlights. It makes it super simple and there's many options to do this, but something that should not be passed over. Now when you're doing the vacuuming portion and you're extracting, the other thing that I often see in used cars is a abundancy of dog hair or pet hair. One thing I highly recommend is get a pet hair brush, get an air gun, or anything that you can do to remove that pet hair from a vehicle because you don't know if the next owner is a pet owner, you don't know if they have an allergy, but also just from an aesthetic standpoint, having a bunch of random hairs sticking out of fabrics or cloth seats is a big no-no and something that you can easily take care of yourself. Now we hit on extraction earlier for fabric and cloth seats and carpets, but for leather seats, just a high quality leather cleaner and conditioner is something that you need to make sure you do to clean up the leather, make sure you remove all those oils and greases on them, keep them completely clean, and then when you apply that conditioner, one, it's gonna smell good, make the car smell like new leather, but also it's gonna give that leather some lubricity and also some elasticity so it doesn't crack and break in the future, and it makes it look awesome, it makes it look brand new. Like these shots here, it completely shows a difference in how good these seats look, so it makes the owner feel more confident about purchasing the vehicle as well. Now, if you want to get a little bit more high tech, we can get into polishing the actual paint. I always like to use orbital, random orbital polishers along with microfiber pads, 
But then when it comes to before you even polish, you have to make sure you clay bar the paint. And to clay bar, you're just gonna have this small blue brick. You can pick it up at any store. And this allows you to remove any contaminants on the surface that did not come off in the wash stage. You're gonna you know, spray on your lubricant. You're gonna use the polish, the actual clay bar to lightly scrub the surface. And that will remove any you know, bugs that have you know stuck to the surface, any grease or grime or tar or like road paint. Anything like that will be removed with the clay bar and it makes a world of difference in the finish of the paint, but also it ensures that when you polish, you don't scratch the paint any further. Now, if you do wanna polish your car's paint, it is something that you can tackle and do very easily, but be prepared that you are gonna spend several hours doing so. For instance, this Suburban here took me a total of five hours to polish the paint, which required a two-step process of two different cutting compound grades, but the end result was a mirror finish and a quality paint job that makes the car look like it was new and not over 30 years old. So there is some benefit to it, but I don't know if you're gonna get your full money's worth depending on the type of car. So be cautious if you wanna tackle this on a flip. Now, if you have chrome bumpers or any sort of polished aluminum, polishing those and making that chrome or metal shine, it's like a mirror essentially. People's eyes are gonna be attracted to it and if it looks clean and crisp, it's a great selling point as well. Another big area for a potential owner to look into is the engine bay. And if you have an engine bay that's covered in grease, full of leaves, looks extremely dirty, doesn't look like the air filter or an oil change or anything maintenance wise has been done to the vehicle whatsoever, that's a huge turnoff for a potential owner. So just cleaning the engine bay, cleaning underneath the hood, just doing a good job cleaning the car overall goes a long way when a potential buyer looks at the vehicle and the engine bay is no exception. For cleaning that engine bay, I just use a pressure washer, a little bit of degreaser, and then let it air dry before reconnecting the battery and putting the air filter back on. The last thing I like to do before I list the car and show a potential owner is to make sure there's no smells in the car once the car has been completely cleaned. Sometimes just the cleaning takes care of it alone, but adding a little baking soda to the carpets and vacuuming that up, putting in air freshener sticks in the air vents. But one of the best ones that I like to use is an odor bomb. You can pick these up at any hardware store or auto store. You close the windows, you turn on the air conditioning system, and it essentially fogs the inside of the vehicle or you can opt for a ozone generator, which generates ozone that neutralizes odor, or a steam cleaner that helps blow out those air vents, which removes odors as well. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe and also check out the Car Flipping 101 course linked down below to learn more and all of the secret tips I did not share in this video.